This is Safe for Work, the Workopolis podcast. Hi, I'm Sal Chalfi, and today on the podcast, personal branding. Everyone and their mother and grandmother is now posting selfies on Snapchat and food pics on Instagram to say nothing of fake news on Facebook. But what does it all mean? Is it all just a way to kill some time or is social media a useful tool, especially when it comes to career building? Madison McGee, Workopolis' social media manager, is here with me today to argue the latter. Hi, Maddie. Hi, Sal. So, before we dive in, how did you get started with social media? Uh, I actually worked in communications for one of my past jobs, and part of that job was to manage all the social media accounts. And I found myself doing that more during the day than anything else, and I just loved managing them. So I thought, why not try and do this full time? So. And on a personal, on the personal side, you mm-hmm. also developed uh, your own following on social media. How, how yes. did that uh, come about? Um, as part of building myself and my career into social media management, I kind of took the route around building my own following through a blog, uh, just to build up my portfolio and to prove to people that you know I could walk the walk and talk the talk and do it myself. So I spent some time building up a following there, which was also a passion and a hobby, and I think it's helped me in my career moving forward. It's how I got the job here. <laughs> and that was the uh, that was a travel blog. Uh, yes, it blog, was. Right? It was focused on travel and lifestyle. Okay, so you built up a personal brand, and personal branding gets discussed a lot when it comes to social media. But what does that mean exactly? It's really about how you market yourself to the outside world. If you're talking to someone and you're looking for a career, or you're introducing yourself to someone, how do you want their perception to be of you? What is it that you want them to walk away with in terms of you and what you stand for and what you're looking for out of your career? Mm -hmm. That's how I would say personal branding looks. And it's getting more and more important for job seekers today, right? Absolutely. It's it really helps to set them apart from competition and it really helps to build up credibility, I think, as a hiring manager looking at two different people. One has built themselves up online with a mm-hmm. personal branding, one has a regular resume. You're gonna go with the one who has shown credibility and has really showcased what they can do online. Okay, so who would you say is a good example of someone using social media for personal branding? Okay, you're gonna laugh, because I know we've talked about this before and you hate it, but the Kardashians, I think, are the perfect example of building a personal brand. All of them within that family have their own little niche subject, and together it just works to build up the brand of the Kardashian empire, I guess you'd say, but every single one of them have their own personal brand, and honestly, people love them, and that's why, is because they've, you know, they found their niche, they've gone after it, and they've really engaged with their followers and their audiences, and they've built themselves up th- from there. So aside from uh, putting out a sex tape, how did they manage <laughs> to do that exactly? Um, first and foremost, getting on Snapchat, they're really integral on Instagram. For a while, I think they started more with Twitter, and I mean, you see it in the earlier episodes of Keeping Up with the Kardashian Story, and yes, I do watch that show. Uh, they're always on Twitter. They're always connecting with their audiences. They're always retweeting them, tweeting at them. And I think that really helped the followers to relate to them. And, you know, they built themselves up that way. They've always been, you know, posting consistently. They're, they're never really off social media, I guess you'd say. Okay. So, I mean, I guess it would be easier when you're part of, like, a Kardashian family or something. But what about, you know, someone like you, you, well, like me, for example? How would I go about doing that? What would be the first steps I would have to take to really build up a following or build up a a social media brand? I think first and foremost, you have to figure out what your unique voice is and what your niche is. What Mm -hmm. do you specialize in? I know that you're really into music. You used to be in a band and still are, I think. So (laughs) finding out what you're interested in and having that authority voice over that specific subject I think really helps and then of course you know synergizing your content across all the social platforms so if I'm coming to your Twitter account I know what you're talking about if I'm going to your Instagram it's the same thing you Mm -hmm. need to have the same voice across all platforms but it's not necessarily the same content across all platforms no you definitely need to diversify I mean you're not going to post the same thing on Facebook as you would on Twitter first Mm -hmm. of all the count of words that you're allowed is different and I mean, Instagram, same thing. You can't be posting links to blog posts or links to websites that you like. It's really just about imagery there. So you definitely need to diversify your content for sure. Okay. Um, I've, you, know, you, you hear often about social media influencers, especially on the marketing side. Mm-hmm. What is that exactly? Social media influencers are interesting because they've really come up in the past couple of years. And I think the basic definition of what they are are people who can reach, or influencers, Um, personalities that um, you can reach audiences that companies can't necessarily. 
So a lot of marketing and advertising these days, it's all about connecting with the audiences and giving them, you know, what they're looking for. And influencers create that word of mouth kind of aspect with it that um, companies can't really. So if you're looking to buy a product, you're far more going to be interested in what the product is and buy it if you have a friend talking to you about it or if you have, you know, a family member. And that's what social media influencers are because they're connecting with people and audiences on that basic level like the Kardashians do (laughs) um, people are more likely to buy from those people than they would from it's like the the specific company modern day take on the celebrity endorsement absolutely okay absolutely so how how does someone become a social media influencer because a lot of these people are not celebrities uh, you know to start but they've sort of become celebrities by virtue of a social media presence right For sure I think first and foremost you need to obviously work on your personal branding Um, You need to have your unique voice in your niche. You need to give people a reason to come back to you. Mm -hmm. So why will people care what it is that you're saying? Why should they, you know, follow you on Instagram? Why should they follow you on Twitter? You really need to work up that personal branding. And, you know, to do that, you really need to synergize your social platforms. So while you need to diversify your content based on where you're posting it, you at the same time really need to keep that brand messaging, you know, the pictures that you're posting, the coloring that you're using consistent across platforms. Okay, so you mentioned diversifying content. So mm-hmm. um, can you explain that a little bit more? So each platform has a different audience mm-hmm. right? and a different style, I guess? Yeah, I mean, with Instagram, for example, you can't be posting links to your blog or to your website. It's really just about imagery and brand building, mm-hmm. um, putting out nice pictures of you know places that you're going to or products that you're using. Uh, with Twitter, you can get a little bit more creative there in terms of videos. You can post photos, links, but you also only have 140 characters to do it. So you've got to be pretty creative if you want to get your message out quickly. Um, and then with Facebook, obviously, it's a little bit longer and gives you that little bit more flexibility. But at the end of the day, you have to be catering what you're saying to where you're posting. Mm-hmm. Uh are there some tools that people can use to sort of manage uh, their, their presence across all these platforms? For sure. So one of the ones that we use here at Workopolis is Hootsuite. It's one of my favorite. It's similar to Sprout Social um, or Buffer if you guys use that. But it's really a way for you to pre-schedule posts for social media so you don't have to worry about it at the time. That being said, you don't want to set it and forget it. Um, While it is great to pre-schedule, you always want to be engaging with your social following. But other tools like Google Docs that you can take anywhere with you, you know, if you have an idea, jot it down in a a Google Doc or a Google Sheet so that you can access it later. Um, And stuff like uh, Photoshop, sorry, or Lightroom are really good for editing photos for Instagram or Facebook where image heavy is is important. Great. You just touched on... um staying engaged and being kind of consistent with it. Mm-hmm. What other tips would you have um, for people looking to build a personal brand on social media? Uh, well, I think first and foremost, you always want to be mindful of what it is that you're actually posting. Um, we've all seen those mistakes of inappropriate posts going out on social, and those come back to haunt you later on in your career. So, you know, if you're out for a few drinks with a few friends, uh, maybe leave your phone at home if you tend to be a drunk tweeter. <laughs> Um, But just be careful of what you're posting. And like I've mentioned before, stay engaged with your audience. Um, Watch for grammar. That's really important. You can always delete a tweet, but, you know, just be mindful of what you're putting out there. And at the end of the day, be authentic to your voice and who you are. That really helps to build your following up more so than anything else because you're building that personalized aspect with your audience. It's funny that everything you just said those rules are all being broken by Donald Trump and that somehow he has a big audience. (laughs) Yeah, that one's a big mystery. (laughs) (laughs) Well, okay, great advice. Um, Thanks, Maddie. Thank you. You can also go to our blog at workopolis.com slash advice for tips and discussion on all things career-related. Safe for Work is produced by me, Sal Chalfi, Paige McGarry, and Madison McKee. It's executive produced by Lana Chen and Anne Valeri. Music by the band Code Pie. You've been listening to Safe for Work the Workopolis podcast. 